Uh, I was first introduced to Brett uh, through social media, actually. Um, I heard about him. I heard he was a professional surfer, big time fisherman as well. He was getting into fishing. You know, and we're always looking for new stories on Unfathomed. And I thought, you know, this guy has a great story. He lives in an incredible destination. He loves to fish and he loves to surf. You look through his social media uh, post, and it, he's a big wave surfer. I mean, this guy charges it. You know, I have some history back in the day when I was younger of surfing, but never waves like this guy uh, attacks. And he makes a living now surfing, and that's pretty incredible. He's proven himself, and now he's just known in the industry. He provides content for many companies, and uh, he's well respected. The Outer Banks is a barrier island pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's incredible uh, how far east it sits out away from the mainland. Trailer and a boat is a long ride. You know, we broke it up into two days. We stopped part way, got a hotel, stayed the night, got an early start the next day, and kind of split it up. But, um, you know, all highway miles, you know, the Camus trailers perfectly, and the Ford pulls it well. So, you know, it's a long trip, but, you know, I'm excited to get to North Carolina. What makes this place so special is that because of where it's located, we're so far from the mainland. We have the whole Pamico Sound, so you're about 20, 25 miles away from seeing land over there. And because of that, we stick way out in the ocean. We're really close to the continental shelf. And because of that, we face a lot of big swells, a lot of crazy weather. You know, geographically where we're located and the fact that it just is still shaped the way it is is super special because you know we got the Gulf Stream coming up from the south and Labrador Current coming from the north and that's why we're shaped the way we are. Little elbow out in the Atlantic. Knowing that this area is also famous for its incredible surf Arriving here, it's kind of what I pictured. It's just a giant sand dune. There's amazing how much sand is here. And these houses are perched, you know, right along the beach. I mean, right in the breaks. It's amazing that these things have survived the test of time. So out here we deal with a lot of wind. Um, it's just always blowing, especially in the summertime. And then you'll kind of hit doldrum areas where the winds fall out, but for the most part you can bank on it being 10 to 15 on just an average day. And then really 15 to 20 is like your typical afternoon, it always breezes up. And so for fishing, getting those days where it's slick calm are super rare. And they're some of my favorite because you just, you don't get it that much. And to get out there, 
on the sound when it's just like oil glass is so special and, and so unique. And, and to be able to show that to George and get out on the water on a day like that was just amazing. Yeah, we got a pretty morning. That sun's just peeking up. Yeah, there's not a lot of wind here. right now. Hopefully we can just see him waking up on top. The Pamlico Sound is huge. I mean, this thing is the largest lagoon on the eastern coast of the United States. It separates the Outer Banks from the mainland, and it's, like I said, a vast amount of water. 15, 20 miles wide some places, 80 miles long, and everything looks good. You start to think to yourself, how am I gonna find an area that's holding fish when it all looks good? Brett's only been really seriously fishing this area for two years, and he must be fishing a lot, because in two years, he's learned a lot. It's amazing to see. I mean, he's really got it dialed in. He knows the different areas. He knows how these fish are reacting on certain tides and where they'll be, and it's amazing. In two years, he's gained that much knowledge of this body of water. There we go. Trice. Nice. A little trouty. Nice trout. Yeah, that's a nice trout. Some head shaking. That is a good trout. So that's pretty common around here. That's one of the main staples, trout. Yeah, especially in the fall. <laughs> nice. Is that a good one for this area? Yeah. That's a solid this is about trout right. anywhere. You know, we had a couple years where it was slow. And last year things started picking back up and the whole fishery just took off. And then this year, this is like pretty much our average. Daddy. So, yeah. Daddy. It's been a good season. And it, coming into the fall right now, this is like prime time. So for the next like two months, it's gonna be going off and then as it gets colder, they all go into the ocean and you get to catch them in the surf. <laughs> no, no doubt. Good job. We switched things up and headed along the shoreline to some creeks. And this, this is a, a different environment. You have these small creeks that feed back into the marsh and they're deeper bodies of water. There he is. Yes, yes. Bouncing the bottom. Flounder, a really Whoa, nice a flounder. Of a, where's the net? <laughs> Wait, for real though. I was bouncing that bottom and he whacked that thing right at the mouth of that creek. You guys have a lot of flounder around here? Yeah. This is a decent. Yeah, our season's been, we only have, this is the only month right now. To get them. Oof. That is a stud of flounder. Nice. Bring him up here. Dude, that is a doormat. That is a good one. Look how fat that thing is. Yeah, our season's only like August something through September 31st. Oh, really? Really short? Yeah. They're obviously highly prized. You know, one side's completely white where it lays on the bottom, and the other side is a perfect camouflage where it's so difficult to see this thing. You can lay this thing on the bottom right in front of you, know it's there, and it still disappears, which is incredible. He's fat. Look how He's fat so he is. fat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look how fat he is when you lay him there. Look how, how high off the ground he is. Jeez. Dick. perfect sight casting conditions. Dead calm. We had all these things going for us and we couldn't find them. But wouldn't you know, at the end of the day, when conditions are the worst, the light is low, the wind is up, the chop is on the water, everything's against us, we're able to find those fish. Finally, we're able to find a school of fish working across a shallow bar, and it's amazing. You find them, you get the cast to them, they're gonna eat. Paul, Paul, there he is. Yes. Got him. Yes. <laughs> on the top water. Yes. Got him on the user. 
Is it a drum or? I don't know. It's oh, a red. It's a drum. Yes. That's <laughs> epic. On the top water. Little guy, but whatever. Got him on top. That's sick. Look at the spots on this one. How pretty is he? Look at that blue tail. Look at that tail. That tail is bright blue. Look at that. How cool is that? Look at all the spots on this one. Look how pretty. He was sent that other, all those other fish were drumming. Dude. Oh yeah, we just those sit here, the dude. Ones. They're gonna keep coming back on that bar. Deciding whether to surf or fish. There are definitely days where the waves are really fun, but the fishing's also really good. It can kind of just pull you from every direction. It's hard to choose. What's rad about here is that there can literally be waves all of a sudden when you're not expecting it at all. And I think that's what's special is that like we get to score days that aren't forecasted. No one's down here and you show up at the beach and there's no one around. Oh, I have this peak, a little peak over here. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Oh boy. What do I wear under this? My shorts? No, nothing. What do you mean? Just put it on. What am I looking at here? Inside out. I had, I had no idea what to expect. I show up, everybody starts putting on wetsuits. I put my wetsuit on backwards. I don't even know it. I'm half dressed. I look like the biggest kook in the world. My wetsuit's inside out. The cameraman's making fun of me. And I know, God, this is going to be a long day. Hey, you're off. Dude, I'm legit. It's like fishing. Even if you don't know how to fish, if you look the part, you can play the part. I'm looking part of the time. Time to trap. Time to what? Trap. Trap. identifies an area where the break is perfect, where it's wedging up, where the water's pouring out, where it's easier to paddle out, and the bar is here, and this is that, and, and it's, that's when you know that it's a different level, where he's seeing things differently than I'm seeing them. But it's an opportunity to learn. You take it in, you're like, wow, you know, okay, I do see that. I see where that rip current would be, and he says, hey, get in this area, you're gonna paddle out, it's gonna take you right out to where you wanna be, then you paddle down the beach. So it's cool to kind of get it from Brett's perspective. What happened, Georgie? Oh, God, I'm terrible. <laughs> you have camera crew laughing at you. They all surf, so I'm even more of a coop. And uh, you just paddle out. You know you're going to get pounded in the surf. You just go out there and just take it like a man. <laughs> Penn has been a trusted leader in the fishing industry for nearly 100 years. There's millions of anglers out there using Penn products every day, and it's proven technology that's built to last. The new Clash 2 is designed for anglers who are looking for a lightweight, durable product. This is the lightest reel ever that Penn has produced, 
and it has its proven CNC gear technology and stainless steel bearings. When you're making hundreds to thousands of casts a day, that weight makes a difference. You don't want to be fatigued, and having the Clash 2 is a perfect fit. Match the new Battalion 2 rods. This is a perfect combination for the type of fishing that I'm doing every day. A variety of sizes, perfect for inshore species, whether I'm trout fishing, red fishing, or snook fishing. This is my go-to combination for myself and my customers. Often I'm asked if I could have one rod or reel, what would it be? And it would be this combination right here. Something lightweight that I can fish inshore, offshore, salt water, or fresh water. This one combination does it all and does it well. The new Clash 2 matched with a Battalion 2 rod is the perfect weapon to add to your arsenal. Check out Pen Products at a local dealer near you. Gnarly. How was that? My bad for not surfing in a year or two. Yeah, no, you're ripping. I'm going to be feeling it tomorrow. For sure. It's a little easier fishing. You know, we got done surfing and, and we had talked about doing some wading, and I was shocked when Brett said, this is it, just grab a rod, let's run across the street, and, and try to catch a couple fish right here. And you know, it's cool, you got your wetsuit on, you can get in the water, you know, you're already warm with the wetsuit on, might as well, just grab a small spinning rod, run over there and try to catch a fish. on one side, flounders on the other. Didn't even take the wetsuits off. Check that out. That's a good size one too. I, to be honest, I felt that, uh, okay, I sucked at the waves, but I showed you I can catch fish. You know, I was like, okay. We're back on my side. Your side was over there, this is my side. We're back on my side, I can catch a fish. So I was like, okay. I felt a, a bit of confidence back after getting drilled in the surf. The area is known for its fishing. Offshore, incredible fishery, known for its marlin, blue marlin, white marlin, and then the redfish. These people go crazy over their surf fishing for redfish, red drum. The largest redfish ever caught was caught here off a pier, which is incredible. You know, Cape Point was the final destination, and that was the final thing that we were gonna do. We were gonna surf fish. Driving around this town, you quickly realize how important surf fishing is to this community. Every truck you see has rod holders on it, and there's beach access where these people drive out and just find a spot, and I tell you, when the run is on, these people get shoulder to shoulder, they love their surf fishing rods, and apparently it can be wide open redfish bite. Uh, Waterman's Retreat, great destination, very welcoming, perfectly situated right there on the sound, you know, caters to, to, the, to the Waterman, hence the name, and, you know, a restaurant right there that served excellent food, it was all encompassing, they had a store there for all of your needs, it was perfect, absolutely perfect. Everything I needed was right there at Waterman's Retreat, the accommodations were five star, top notch, it was a, a wonderful destination, everybody should try that place out. Thank you. 
Woo. Found it. <laughs> Third time it's broken. These ain't Florida beaches. What do I wear under this? My shorts? No, nothing. Really, you, you you free ball it. Yeah. Sweet. Is that is that the trick? Yeah. Are you gonna wear those under your wetsuit? No, I said I gotta I gotta go down to my birthday suit. Wow, those stickers hurt. <laughs>